Well, Alia, I spoke to Miriam Cates, the Conservative MP for Penniston and Stocksbridge in South Yorkshire. She's a leading member of the new Conservative group, which is calling for tax cuts and lower immigration. So we represent what we call the new conservatism, so this coalition of voters from our traditional shires, if you like, the home counties, and our new voters from the industrial red wall, the post-industrial heartlands, like where I represent in, in North Sheffield and Barnsley. And our, well, our premise is that we had a magic formula in 2019. We united those small C conservatives across the country from those very different backgrounds. And that's what brought us to power. That's what gave us that 80-seat majority. And we believe the demand for that kind of politics is still there. And we think we can see that in the polls when we start to talk more common sense about net zero and things like that. You say the demand's still there. It sounds a little bit like you're saying that's not the direction you're going in. Well, what I'm saying is, although the promise was there in 2019 to move to this new kind of politics much more in line with the interests of ordinary people, we've only partially fulfilled that. So yes, we delivered Brexit, we've done some other good things, but essentially we haven't fully freed ourselves from the shackles of European law, we haven't fully reformed taxation, we certainly haven't fulfilled our promises on immigration levels, for example. But what we're saying is it's not too late. We can have a manifesto that absolutely leans back into the interests of those voters. And as we've seen from a, you know, a modest but definitely a poll bounce since Rishi Sunak spoke so convincingly on the pragmatic approach to net zero last week, common sense cuts through. And so in this rally that we just had now, which wasn't just our new Conservatives group, we also had the support of senior, very well-known colleagues like Bill Cash and Jacob Rees-Mogg and Priti Patel all spoke and Ian Duncan Smith. So let's take some of these things, shall we? Taxes. What specifically, what specific taxes do you want to see come down? So often when we talk about tax cuts, we're talking about big headline rates and how much the wealthiest pay. But what we're saying is that there are certain pinch points of our economy, certain income levels for families and small businesses that are a real burden on productivity. So an example that we gave today is VAT. The VAT registration threshold has been £80,000 for a long time. Now, if you're a plumber and your turnover is 80000 that doesn't make you rich because probably half of that or more is spent buying pipes and boilers and things like that. If we increase that threshold to £250,000, instead of deliberately squashing their businesses to not have to register... I mean, that's a massive tax it cut is for a people massive. earning a lot it of is. money. But right? it's also a, it's also anti-inflationary and it is boost productivity because if you're that plumber who's approaching the threshold, do you do you register for VAT, have to charge your customers 20% more and deal with HMRC, or do you take two months off to make sure you don't go through the threshold? It's such a drain on productivity. So those are the kind of tax tweaks that we could make that would increase productivity, but are not about you know slashing headline rates just for the newspapers. Um, and how about immigration? What, what kind of levels do you want to see it come down to? Well, in 2019, we promised to reduce net migration. And in 2019, net migration was 200,000. And I think so all, you want it to go down to less Well, we than should at least 000. go back to the 200,000. And we saw last year the net was 600,000. And, and so what's going wrong? You want to reduce it to a third of what it is currently? Potentially. And obviously, and we can't do that. In, big, yeah. It is big. But our, our first policy paper, our first New Conservatives policy paper, back in July, I think, set out exactly how we would do that. I think it was eight or ten measures, tweaking student visas, tweaking dependent visas, those kind of things that would bring us back down uh, to that mark. And that, you know, that's a basic fulfilment of a promise uh, to the British people. So it's those kind of things where, you know, we've said the right things and we are, you know, we have control over European migration now, but we've set our points-based system far too flexibly, uh, far too low a bar in terms of salary and skill level to come in, and we've got to fix that for the next election. So let's ask you about high speed two, mm. because look, we pretty much know what's going to happen, even if number 10 aren't admitting it. Um, the second leg connecting Birmingham to Manchester, but also crucially to all those other northern towns and cities as well. It's not going ahead. Yes. You, is that OK with you? I think it's been a, a terrible, scandalous waste of money so far. And I think the promise was good in it, it originally. But let's be honest, getting to London faster and more often is not levelling up the north. That's not what's going to boost productivity in places like mine. What's going to boost productivity in places like mine is those local connections. So when I go and knock on doors in my constituency, what people say to me is, my, you know, my young adult child can't get to training. They can't get to work because there are no buses anymore, there are no local trains. And I think it's absolutely right to take that money that was going to be sent on this project that wouldn't have actually helped any of my constituents, actually, because we don't live uh, close enough to the planned route. But to repurpose that into the kind of local transport that absolutely will level up, if you like. So, you know, yes, of course, it's a scandal and an embarrassment in many ways how long it's taken, but I do think this is the right decision.